Hi folks, what's up? I checked out all the comments under my videos. Looks like people are more interested in antenna array and beam steering. So I'm going to make a serial of videos to demonstrate the design procedure of a 28 GHz patch antenna array. Here is the syllabus of this course. If you are interested in the material, you can download it. I leave the link in the comments. Before design a real antenna array, I will design a microstrip line fed antenna array to help you understand the design procedure and point out some issues we might suffer. Then we are going to work on a more practical project, namely a 28 GHz patch antenna array fed by strip line. This material includes nine chapters which are divided into three parts, from chapter 2 to 5, a patch antenna array with a feeding network made by stripline, from chapter 6 to 8, a patch antenna array with a feeding network made by stripline, chapter 9 is beam forming. I'm going to make one or two videos for each chapter. Now let's start from the radiation element design. In this demo, Rogers 4350 is used. It is a low-loss substrate and good for millimeter wave applications. This datasheet provides the curves of a DK and 10D vary with respect to frequency. So you know the exact DK and 10D at your working frequency, which can reduce the difference between simulation and the practical measurements. We can find the Rogers 4350 in the CST material library. So I just used the default DK and 10D. Next, we need to calculate the initial dimensions of the patch antenna. Previously, I made a video to demonstrate how to calculate the patch antenna dimensions and its working mechanism. We can also find lots of a patch antenna calculator online, such as this one. I input the substrate information and get the initial dimensions of the patch. We start from feeding the antenna with coaxial cable. The modeling procedure can be found in another video. If you are interested in it, you can find it here. Here is the EMI simulation results. It has good matching at 28 GHz. Next, I'm going to import this antenna element into a new project as a sub-project to form an antenna array. In this case, when I make any change in the sub-project, the array will be automatically changed, so it can save the time to rebuild the array. Here is the simulation result of the array. You can find here is a frequency shift in the two inner elements. It is caused by the fringing effect. You can change the size of each radiation element, but I want to reuse the element, so I decide to increase the, the isolation between adjacent elements, which can help me lower the fringing effect and decrease the frequency shift in the end. This will be demonstrated in another video. Thanks for watching and please keep your eyes on this project.